Laura. Happy Valentine's Day. If you don't have a Valentine, I'm your Valentine now. Lucky you. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to make anatomically correct, heart-shaped, red velvet flavored, cream cheese filled French macaron cookies. <sighs> that took me like 500 tries to say that right. Because what better way to say I love you than a bloody organ-shaped cookie, am I right? So these are great for Valentine's Day, not only because they are red velvet flavored and they're red, but also because they are quite literally a heart. So the ingredients that you're going to need for this, you're going to need one cup of almond flour, a tablespoon of cocoa powder, three-fourths a cup of powdered sugar, a fourth a cup of just regular sugar, a fourth a teaspoon of cream of tartar, a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, the whites from two large eggs, your coloring. To do the heart, we are going to be using red, purple, and blue. And they're going to hopefully look something like this when we're done. Let's just go ahead and start making our macarons. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to sift together your almond flour, cocoa powder, and powdered sugar. Not like that. What the fuck? Then after you have sifted it, you should have all of the larger pieces in here and we're just going to toss those in the trash and then you should have a nice fine powder mix of your almond flour, powdered sugar, and your cocoa powder. After you have sifted all of your dry ingredients, you're going to take your two eggs and you're going to separate the yolks from the whites and it's a little tricky but it's not too bad so we'll see how I do. <laughs> And these are just going to go in a large mixing bowl by themselves at the moment. Oh, yeah. Save your yolk for a lovely snack later on. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, only slightly. Beat the egg whites by themselves in a large mixing bowl with the whisk attachment until they're foamy. Then just add your cream of tartar in addition to your regular sugar and add that spoonful by spoonful. You don't want to do it all at once. Then after that, you can add your vanilla extract as well. And you're going to continue to mix this until these stiff peaks form. I'm a cheater. After you have your whipped egg whites, they have formed these nice stiff peaks, as you can tell. We are now going to mix the dry ingredients with our wet ingredients. In the recipe that I was using, it said to go ahead and mix your food coloring in this, but since we're going to be having three different colors, red, purple, and blue, we are going to divide this up into um, unequal thirds <laughs> and dye them our fun colors. This is what we are going to be basing our cookies after. There are fewer purple spots and there are blue and there are fewer blue spots and there are red. So I'm going to recommend that you divide this up probably like an 80-20 thing and then the 20 you can divide that however you want between purple and blue. I'm using gel food coloring. A lot of people when they make macarons they use gel food coloring because the gel doesn't mess with the chemistry of that as much as like a water-based or liquid food coloring would. And as we all know, macarons are very delicate and fragile things to make. I can just fucking open. I can just open. Why is this so hard to open? Oh my god. I'm gonna get blue all over my hand. What the frick? Why do they not have a pull tab? Okay, I have opened them finally. I got some on my hands as I knew I would, but they are all open. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a little bit of this coloring in each of my bowls.
When mixing the dry ingredients with your whipped egg whites, you want to use the folding technique so that you don't collapse all of the precious little air pockets that you just created. So once you have made your batter, you can go ahead and start outlining the shapes that you're going to be piping out onto your baking sheets. We are going to use our little cutout anatomical heart shape and we're going to trace around it so that we have something, a guideline to follow when we pipe out our actual batter onto the parchment paper. As many as you do tracing like this, you also want to do an equal amount tracing like this because when you bake it, you want to be able to put the two cookies together and for them to be facing the right directions as this is not symmetrical. If that doesn't make sense, then just do as I say and then at the end you'll see what I mean. Get your little shape and you're going to place it on here and it's super simple. You're just going to trace around it. After you have finished drawing all of your outlines onto your parchment paper, you're then going to put your batter into piping bags and you're just going to simply pipe out the design. Basically we're going to be trying to make this general shape with our batter. After the cookies have baked and they've hardened and everything, we are going to use royal icing, also known as cookie icing, to go in and then do all the little details. Let's just go ahead. Here is our blue. It looks kind of green, but I'm gonna try my best. So once you have piped out all of your cookies, you are going to tap this real hard on any surface just so that they can settle and so that when they cook they don't um, crack their nice clean shells. But I don't know if they'll do that or not considering that these aren't perfectly round. So <laughs> it's all just a bit of a gamble if you ask me. So after you have Firmly, firmly grasp it. sat them on the table. Let them sit out for 15 to 30 minutes just so they can rest a little bit before they go on their perilous journey into the oven. You can go ahead and preheat your oven while you're waiting for them to rest. We're going to heat that to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius if you don't live in the United States where all of our measuring things are completely fucked up. So in 15 to 30 minutes, come back to these bad boys and we're gonna pop these suckers right in the oven. Our cookies have come straight out of the oven and they're looking pretty cute, I must say. One thing that I am a little disappointed in is that they don't have any of those traditional like feet that come with the macarons, but it's fine, they look great. So, what you're going to do now is my favorite part, it's decorating. I have some cream cheese icing, royal icing, blue, and red. I recommend getting royal icing because when it dries it hardens and you won't have to deal with any sticky icing on top when we go in with the details and create our lovely veins in our heart. We're going to be making this kind of design. We're basically just going to be using the blue and the red royal icing to draw out some veins. I do have some red sprinkles and I'm going to put that on the red royal icing. Red royal icing, red royal icing. <laughs> I'm trying to say that like five times fast. Red you can just use a toothpick and to get those finer veins.
Here is what it looks like after you have done all of your cute little cute little veiny fleshy designs on your heart now it's time for assembly find the cookie that best matches whatever shape this is and we're just gonna do like this so I have my cream cheese icing in my piping bag with a star tip flip over a cookie and we're gonna pipe 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 Oh my gosh, it's so cute. They're pretty big. Like usually your standard macaroon, I don't think is like this big. And that's why I was only able to make eight of them. Eight. But I'm pretty satisfied with this and I can't wait to do all the other ones. we're done. Ta-da! Here you go. You have your anatomical heart-shaped red velvet flavored macaroon cookie. Perfect for Valentine's Day. I'm super proud of these actually. I didn't think that they would turn out looking this good, but they did. Time for the taste test. It really just tastes just like a red velvet cake. This is really good. Oh! I like this video. Subscribe. Like. <laughs> no, but really. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more content like this in the future, you know what to do. I, on the other hand, I'm going to continue eating this. Mmm.